Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the Minister in Placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton. And in this video, we'll be following on the theme that I've been working on over the last few weeks of those resources that enable us to stay afloat in today's world. In particular, we'll be looking at that, well, gift rather than resource, the gift of prayer. But, but more about that in a moment. In the meantime, just a reminder to you that if you'd like to contact us at St Luke's or you'd like to find out what's on at St Luke's or because of COVID not on at St Luke's, then uh, go to our website, stlukesuca.org.au. Christians gather for worship, the first thing we do is to acknowledge that we're in the presence of God. So let's do that now. Let us come before the God who is the creator of the universe, the God who has come amongst us in the person of Jesus Christ, the God who knows us, knows you, knows me intimately. Let's come before God in prayer. This prayer contains some elements that have been written by John Harvey, who's a minister in the Church of Scotland. So now I invite you to be still, to uh, try to put to one side anything that might distract you, to pause and give space for God. Let's pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you embrace all time and eternity in your care, yet you are right here with each of us in this present moment. As we pause in prayer, enable us to still our rushing, swirling thoughts so we might concentrate on you, our life and our hope. Open our hearts and souls to your peace and your healing. Compassionate God, who knows us intimately and loves us unconditionally, look in mercy on us and deal with those aspects of our living and our thinking that do not equate with the way of Jesus. Help us to come clean with ourselves and with you about our deep and often hidden needs. Challenge us and forgive us. Speak your word for us. Show us how to search for you in the midst of life. Help us to believe and trust that no wrong we have done and no good we have failed to do is too great for you to pardon through Jesus Christ the Son. Amen. We're going to listen now to one of the Psalms. The book of Psalms, of course, is the hymn book and the prayer book of the Hebrew people. And this particular Psalm begins with a profound human cry to God for support and aid. And then we hear in this conversation that takes place in the psalm, words of hope and comfort that come from God. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. If you go back over the sermons and reflections that I've offered over the last few years, you'll discover that I often end up focusing on prayer. And as I've thought about that, I think that's as it should be, because prayer is about our relationship with God. And in fact, my understanding of prayer is that it is an intentional expression of our relationship with God. It's intentional in the sense that we have to determine that we're going to pray. You have to be conscious about it. 
and it's relational in the sense that it's our deep response to the God who has spoken to us in the person of Jesus Christ, who welcomes us with love and joy and grace in the same way that uh, the father welcomed the son in the story, the parable of the prodigal son. And more than that, more than that, prayer is life-giving. It's life-giving. You may know the story of Terry Waite. Terry Waite was an ambassador for the Archbishop of Canterbury and was kidnapped and imprisoned in Lebanon during the 1980s for 1,763 days. Terry was literally kept alive spiritually, physically and emotionally because he spent each day following a pattern of prayer. He used uh, the resources from the Anglican prayer book, most of which he just remembered, as that which kept him alive during that time. Now the psalm we heard was Psalm 121. And it's believed to be a psalm used by pilgrims either going up to the temple in Jerusalem or coming back from the temple in Jerusalem. Now, when we think of Psalm 121 and its opening verse, we often, often think of it in poetic terms because for us, when we think of hills and mountains, we think of the wonder of these places. But for the ancients, hills and mountains were scary places, places of fear, because there there be robbers and beasties. So in this opening part of Psalm 121, we, we hear a kind of relational thing going on. God impacting on people as much as people offering their prayers to God. So the, the people call out to God in fear. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where will my help come from? And the, and the response is, the word of God comes to the people. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Here in this psalm, we're reminded that prayer is relational and it's two way impacting on us as much as impacting on God. Prayer, of course, takes many forms. It can be a time of silent reflection and listening and meditation. It can be a time of overflowing uh, personal free prayer in which one offers one's needs, one's concerns, one's confession, one's praise to God in the words that are led by the Spirit. Or it can be something in which uh, the prayer, the person praying, is led by resources that come from the life of the church and back into the time of the Hebrew people. So that resource might be psalms, or it might be prayers from the prayer book, or it, uh, or it might be some other resource, like a hymn, being offered as a prayer. I want to conclude this, uh, this reflection by by focusing on one kind of prayer, one of those prayers that uh, generations have used, or a type of prayer that generations have used, the collect. Collects have a simple and repeated pattern and have an economy of words. They begin by addressing God and naming the good works that God has done. This seems to me so important because it is easy to think we're in the... We're by ourselves. We're at the centre of the universe. But by beginning a prayer with naming of God, we remind ourselves that we're not the centre of the universe, that we have a God who is with us, who journeys with us. And also it's a reminder to those voices in the secular age that this is not any God. This is a God who acts. So the first element is naming God and naming God's action. The second element is some sort of petition, but some sort of petition with a purpose and some sort of intention following from the petition. And finally, there's some words of praise, perhaps just naming Jesus as Lord. Let me give to you as an example a prayer that's used by the Anglican Church, a collect. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to you in service and live this day in love to one another and to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In these turbulent times, can I encourage you to draw on the resource that prayer is, the rich resource prayer is, 
It is life-giving. It's relational. It is a way of engaging in relationship with God and draw on all the wonderful resources that are available. The Psalms, the ancient prayers of the church like the Collects, and of course the greatest of all prayers, the Lord's Prayer. Let's continue in prayer now, a prayer which is a prayer of thanksgiving and a prayer of intercession, a prayer that has elements that have been written by Ian MacDonald, a, a minister with the Church of Scotland. And I take responsibility for the other elements. Let's pray. Ever faithful Father, ever giving Son, ever present Spirit, Holy One, Holy Three, for the many gifts you grant us and the opportunity to enjoy these gifts, for your daily provision and for the constant signs of your healing love, for hope amidst despair and the light which always shines, for all these things, however inadequately, we offer our thanks. May our thanks and praise, our deep gratitude for who you are and for what you've done for us, flow out into our words, thoughts and actions. When the opportunities come our way, may we serve you by serving others. Enable us to be healers, peacemakers, and ambassadors of the gospel of hope, the good news of Jesus Christ. Compassionate God, in silence we bring before you those people and issues that are closest to us and that occupy our minds at this time. God, who in Jesus has made clear that you love the whole world and its peoples, we bring before you people and issues from around our planet. We think of people impacted by the pandemic, by despondency and a lack of hope, by fear, by hate, by oppressive and violent regimes, by disasters, natural or otherwise, by hunger and thirst, by grief and nearness of death. God of hope and healing, may we in some way be a part of the answer to these prayers of our hearts. And we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Hey, Peter Osamani Ma, Namato Mukadas Bod. پادشاهی تو بیاید اراده تو همانطور که در آسمان اجرا می شود در زمین نیز اجرا شود نان روزانه ما را امروز به ما بده خطاهای ما را ببخش چنان که ما نیز خطاکاران خود را می بخشی. ما را در وسوسه ها می آورد بلکه ما را از شریر رهاییده زیرا پادشاهی و قدرت و جلال تا عبد الاباد از آن توست آمین As we conclude this video, may I share with you some words that I often use at the end of worship services. Words of hope, words of, of challenge, words that come to us from Desmond Tutu, the Anglican Archbishop from South Africa. Go in peace and remember goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and your loved ones, both now and forever. Amen.